something that I prepare, but I don't think today, yani we, don't, we cannot force everyone to, to follow this. And I, did not, I sent it only lately to uh, our sister, Chris. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, this is the template that we can send Bartola and Ramli, because you are leading this. Okay. But Fred will help you and, uh, and maybe uh, Chris will help you, but you will lead this in the future. Today we will lead me and uh, Dunya until uh, you practice and you can welcome to ask any questions uh, as per the, uh, our discussion earlier. Okay. So the template is about uh, to help the uh, person build their life story or, or, or the kickoff of their life story. Okay. The main, main milestones of their life story. Okay. And we say this is managed by youth. So it is even though, and we consider you, uh, Bartola, you are from youth. Okay. So uh, uh, the presentation. Okay. So these are the questions that uh, I sent to uh, the main guys of you. Okay. So these are the presentations. They help them to collect the ideas. And then I put mainly um, alternative questions that uh, suggested by uh, Ramli also can be uh, suggested uh, for by the IB host for the specific person. Because she knows uh, Chris, she made these uh, three questions. So we have uh, in every meeting, there is generic questions that we can ask. Maybe they don't want to answer. Maybe uh, they don't have, it's not applicable to them. And we have uh, specific questions. Okay. Uh, and believe me that one of the things that is maybe uh, very important, we did not do yet, huh? I did it in the beginning. I, guess I did a study. I was discussing with the uh, Prof. Chris. Uh, I did a study about the characteristics of the inspired, of the students, but we did not uh, do about elder people. And we are not talking about inspiring leaders. Huh? Be careful, because there is lots of, in the internet and in literature, something called inspire leaders. Okay, they are talking about one person that he's inspired and the rest is followers. No, we are talking about an inspiration economy. We believe Bartola, Godfrey, Remli, uh, okay. Uh, we have also a Bahrain team, uh, Safa, Wala. We believe that everyone is inspired, okay. But we need to know the trait that make them inspired. Because in our life, you might lose an inspiration and we might gain inspiration. And you'll see, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be ahead of the, of the time, that uh, lo most of the inspired, whether they are young or old, they'll go through challenges. Okay, so that's again something that I leave it for you. Intentionally, I believe, in, and if you want to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, exploit the memories of anyone, give them insights. Okay, and this is because I write in these things a lot, and mindset, and you know, and, and the mind, I, I focus on the mind, spirit, and so on. So one of the things I, I throw here is, for example, a photo about childhood, a photo about youth. Not necessarily today, but I'm saying that this is maybe, you can use this and develop it. Uh, what I want from you, Bartolle specifically, that you will lead in, in developing the material of this. Because over time, might be the, this might be a program that attract people to the inspiration economy. And we want people more to believe in inspiration economy. Okay? And we want people to know that there is difference between being successful and being inspired. Because you might be successful, but you are not being inspired. Okay, inspiration means how many people you have influence in your life, how many people you have changed the life of community or, or uh, but not working for yourself, working for uh, most of the time for, uh, for uh, uh, changing something in your, in your uh, lifetime or your socioeconomy and so on. Okay, so this is one uh, type. Also another, I put uh, another type of photos. Uh, these two slides, I, cook, I, 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 tell them, I, I call them, exploitation slides. I mean, I want to exploit, okay, the memories of the person uh, if they can. And then I left uh, the rest is free. So intentionally, I did not develop this more because I believe in the over time, Bartolla and Ramli, still I'm saying, you are the leaders. Me and Godfred and uh, Wala and Safa will help you in whatever you want uh, from uh, this, okay? Wala and Safa, maybe uh, the guys, you don't know them. They are the leaders here, the youth leaders. Uh, in uh, Bahrain. Well, uh, she's the one, she did the conference in, uh, in Bahrain, which is, I think, uh, most of you have missed uh, to attend uh, last time. I hope, inshallah, next time you can attend with us. Okay. 
so now I'll leave the floor for uh, Sister Chris. If you want to lead, you want to you talk yourself, or you want uh, uh, Dr. Dunya to help you in uh, asking you and so on. The title of the paper and the title of today's talk is How to Succeed in Life. And it's really about um, a reflection, what I learned and uh, uh, what I'd like to share. To give you the context of where I'm living, this is uh, a lake, Lake Taupo, that's very near our house. It's a remnant of a historic volcano that was so large, the ash was felt uh, and recorded in history in ancient China. So it was a very, very large volcano that used to be here. And um, I find this really, I'm just, Admitting Walla now. Um, I find this lake uh, very helpful in terms of, uh, of reflecting. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. We're here as um, Dr. Simon's already talked about, we're here as a network to share and collaborate and to learn from one another. And I think this is, uh, this is uh, uh, something from the Hadith here that I think is very helpful for us all to reflect on. Um, acquiring knowledge, it didn't right from wrong, it lights the way to heaven. It's a friend in the desert and this is one of the parts of Bahrain where I have been living until recently that I really love, the tree of life um, and I suppose that, that the desert in many ways is similar to the lake. So these are giving you a bit of an idea of uh, things that I value um, and have come to value over my life. Although obviously in my thoughts, but I, in humbleness, I'm very flattered to think that um, you might uh, want to learn from me. Um, but I'm coming to you um, in a humble way um, to share what I've learned and to learn from you, because there is that triangle of the learner, leader, teacher that I think that we all like to use in our in our reflections on life. So from the other view um, from my house I can see the mountain and that's what's in the, the middle section there. I always feel when you're in the environment you're very close to God um, and through having the experiences of your life whether they at the time seem to be good or bad uh, you can always learn from them, um, reflect on them and then use that knowledge to, to go forward. And I think that's what we're trying to do in this network. We're trying to speed up our learning by not just thinking about what we've experienced, but by sharing um, with others. Uh, I really believe in the power of reflection and I've um, been engaged in many books. Here's a picture of me with my friend who's the editor of most of these books. This is Muhammad um, Issa. Um, he is an inspirational uh, speaker, and I can recommend um, that you might like to read some of these other books. They're all written by ordinary people like you and me. Um, this one's about women on success, and it's the feature of today's topic. But we've also written ones on startup, this one on management, different topics um, that, uh, of interested people. This one called The DNA of Development, which is about um, HR practices in Bahrain um, and so on. So I recommend these uh, because they're learning from other people's experiences but maybe also a model that you might like to use as a network as Dr. Muhammad's already said that we can put all our experiences together and from it we can um, reflect ourselves it makes it the practice of writing makes us reflect but also the, um, by writing and publishing, it enables us to share, especially in this um, COVID-19 um, pandemic, it enables us to share um, more readily the 
um for others i'm just admitting paul now he's just of today's um of today's section the um is to look at women on success so those people who just joined i hope that makes sense to you so as one of the chapters in this book but all of the women from different different nationalities and experiences in different countries the theme that comes through and that's the sort of thing that Muhammad's suggesting we do is to do a thematic analysis of all these talks at the end the thing that came through this book was where there's a will there's a way and that despite various obstacles that all the women experienced they were able to do something significant with their life somebody else Um, I'm actually um, nearly 70 now, so I've, I will have lived the three score and ten that in the Bible they I lived in England. I will send you all that's got fuller details. It covers an article is about um, girls can do anything, but can they? Then looking at the my experience in opportunities are available to women uh, in the country of steps reflecting on my experience of how uh, and look at that so um, with that like to talk about some of these aspects so I can let's think about um, I work predominantly in the Middle East um, I've been working a UK based company because we can hear you rustling your papers sorry Jacob Patty can you please so I'm an education consultant and I like to work on school improvement in a in Sharjah um, in Abu Dhabi and in, in um, these when I saw the whole girl as shown in the picture there those days uh, it wasn't common for women to be in medical profession if you are familiar with him but he was a musician and also he did a lot of missionary work in Africa and it was my dream oh, Wallace now joining again um, to work in Africa and um, help as my mom Um, helping impoverished people and dedicating my life to education for girls he just said to me well you're just going to get married 
be like your mother. My mother, fortunately, although she was, I think about number six or seven in the family, um, no, uh, to my father, let her be a nurse. Well, none of those are what I really want to do, but I still wanted to be a doctor. In those days, most of the headmistresses weren't married, so they didn't really have that. I remember one day she called uh, an assembly of 1,200 girls. There was only three of us who arrived. Uh, sharing what was my dream. He decided to ask us all to get together because she gave us a big leap. Train and you're all too dumb. So we all felt, well, no, that wasn't possible for us to, to go into that career. And so I went to be a teacher instead because that was more socially acceptable. And um, it was well, the government at the time gave a scholarship for, for teaching. And so that meant I didn't have to. I can plant. Uh, my mother was appalled at that time, thinking, You're not going to uh, be able to support me uh, to go to. Not to do that, and with the scholarship, I put myself through university, even though my. However, looking back, um, you always look back on these hard. Became a principal, it helped shape my own view. Girls who were my students um, would have access and. them. So although I never got to be like Albert life and compare with what he did, uh, there are a lot of elements there not enough to work there yet, but there's still maybe opportunity once the pandemic in other countries, I feel I've been doing something valuable, helping children so I've done something useful with with my life in that way um, the other thing that I think has helped shape uh, my my life uh, are some of the philosophies that my father um, had about he I had what I would say a Protestant upbringing Or talks about uh, to be successful in life, you need to have a certain amount of talent, I suppose, but also that hard work and perseverance, not giving up in the face of adversity, are the things that make one successful. Uh, there's also some research being done that shows that, if you like, being born at the right time um, makes a difference for people. And what was interesting to me is after then thinking about my own life, I went, talked to some of my Bahraini friends and I did some research on women, women's, someone else's joining, which must have hundreds of people or maybe them going in and out. Um, looking at women's career opportunities in Bahrain and talking to some of my colleagues, they were quite surprised when they saw my own story and they said, oh, Chris, we thought uh, for a Western woman it would be different because your story is the same as mine, that maybe they'd wanted to have a particular career and their parents and the school hadn't supported it. Um, a colleague of mine when I was working at the Polytechnic, Abdul Rida 
this mall and myself, we did some research with our students, careers advisors in Bahrain and teachers. And we found that um, parental influence on a career was, uh, was changing a little bit. Um, they also found that certain jobs were thought not to be socially acceptable to women, um, sometimes for religious grounds, um, for example, working in hotels, um, working in anything to do with alcohol. Um, but in the end, things like teaching and nursing, just as when I was young, they're still the most favoured uh, jobs for, you know, for, for girls or socially acceptable jobs, I should say, not necessarily what we favour. Uh, Walla, I keep admitting Walla, but she still keeps coming up, so I'm not sure if she's joined or not. I've admitted her about four times now. Walla, are you there? Okay. So um, in the paper, I've presented some research on the Bahrain situation, which I'll let you read to your own, um, for your own interest. But I guess uh, this will be a point of reflection for everybody, perhaps to look in terms of a theme, um, to look uh, in your own society and look at the data and see whether um, women do get similar pay to men, what range of occupations are they in, and most importantly, do they go on to become managers? Because in Bahrain there are 50%, Bahrain has had education for for women since uh, a long time. They had early votes for women. 50% uh, of uh, women are uh, in, the, um, in the labor force, uh, although they tend to be more in part funds. They do have uh, equal opportunities in that way, but if you look at the number of people who are in um, management levels, the number is actually quite small. And that would be consistent, as I say, with New Zealand uh, and in many parts of the world. And that's a question. Um, is that something that we need to do something about? And I know that in Bahrain, the Women's Council have done a lot of work on trying to encourage that. And at the moment, I'm involved with a company called EMIC Training, um, and they're working with the, uh, in the National Bank of Bahrain and they've got a leadership development course, especially for women. So there are some really um, amazing things happening um, in Bahrain. And once again, what's happening, the question is what's happening in your own country to help develop women's potential and give them a choice. But even having, knowing that you can run programs and mentor and coach people to support them, which was one of the questions that was posted um, woman to be successful, um, to be resilient and not to give up at the first uh, time you have a problem uh, by having someone to talk to about it. We have to change our thinking and look at uh, success in our own terms. That's probably the, one of the main reflections in my writing. So, and this also comes from Albert Schweitzer. He said, uh, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. Okay? Success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. And I think this is a very um, important finding from my own reflection. If you love what you're doing, then you are successful. And I suppose in my early life, I was very driven. I see uh, um, Dr. Muhammad is very similar to myself in that regard, very driven, I was very ambitious, not ambitious to be the top, but always wanting to do my very best, because that's how I was brought up, that you should work hard and um, use God's gift in the fullest way. It was your responsibility to, um, to, do, to do your best. Um, so that, that, was, that was something that was in my family upbringing, but it was reinforced by religion. Um, that, that's been helpful, but only later on did I realise that, um, that I probably didn't have a good life balance. And it's only later on that I've learnt to 
it um, have a fuller life by work, not only working hard, but playing hard, the dream. And so I've used that analogy of riding a bike, which was another long-term dream, to provide advice, as it were, to my younger self or to, to other young people um, of how to succeed in life. So the suggested steps Just move forward on here. To success, to be successful, you have to define your own terms. Uh, what success means to you. So you need to be able to see your goal. What it, what is it that you want to do? So for myself, it was about riding my bike, but I really believe in the idea of visualization. And it may be that if you are a religious person that you might um, see that as prayer or visualization, whatever it is, be clear about your goal. And for me, riding a bike, I realized retrospectively, I wasn't always clear. I remember I used to have pictures of bikes stuck on the mirror, but there were all kinds of bikes. Some of them were dirt bikes that you'd ride on a farm. It was only later on when I came to Bahrain, actually, that I met um, a young Bahraini woman who was employed at Polytech with me. She was our first employee and she kindly took me to her house and introduced me to her family, but she also introduced me to her husband's bike. <laughs> and I fell in love with this bike and I took a photo and I used to have it on my phone. And once I'd been really clear about exactly what bike I wanted, which was a Harley Davidson a Sportster, uh, once I was really clear on that, then that's actually um, you know, help me decide what I was going to have for my own bike. And this is me with my first bike here, um, the Harley Davidson Sportster in Bahrain on the on the dirt bike there. One of the things that I enjoyed about riding um, was that I met other women, and you can see if I'm on the top left, there aren't many women riders. Most of the people are men. Um, but uh, there are a small group of women, all from different countries, um, and we also met the riders from different countries, and I've ridden in every part of the Gulf except for Saudi Arabia, because at the time um, when, I, when I was there, um, still got my bike, but when I was there, you couldn't, ladies couldn't ride, which they can today, we couldn't drive a car or anything, and in Saudi, but you can now. So the first thing that you had to work out once you set your goals is understand some of the obstacles and try and um, look at the barriers. So one of the obstacles was my husband. Um, he was very anti the idea of me getting a bike, but I came over to work in Bahrain supposedly for six months, but I've stayed there for 12 years. And when I was first there, I was by myself. So this was an opportunity for me to learn to ride a bike. The other obstacle was my mother. Uh, all my brothers had bikes. I was the eldest in the family. Uh, all the rest of my siblings are um, boys and they all had bikes, but I wasn't allowed one. So my mother wasn't with me either. So, <laughs> so finally I got the opportunity to realize my dream. But there were more um, obstacles than that. I had to, um, uh, clear my mind of self-doubt because in my, in my own mind that was an obstacle with how to go about this. The training in Bahrain is very well done at the Ministry of Transport. You just paid 63 dinar and off you went. They provided a bike and uh, you learnt in the safety of their training facility. They said, Chris, don't give up on the first day because they will try and put you through. Um, they, they said, make sure that you uh, take advantage of the full week's training. So every time they try and um, say, well, you're ready now, you can, you can go. Um, I'd say, no, I'm not ready. And so I'd have to join another group and get more time. So in that way, I was able to have quite a good skill level by the time that I did get my, my license. And um, I think 
the idea of embracing the challenge of making sure that um, if you really want something that you are going to do the, put the practice in. So I spent ages of time with one of my colleagues who was also getting his license at the same time, going around the 22 roundabouts in Hammertown, practicing um, so that we could uh, start going to some of these different countries. And our first trip away was to Kuwait, which I must admit, after that experience, I came back to Bahrain and said, well, I'm never going to complain about Bahraini drivers again, ever, because their way they drive over there was like legalised rally driving. So that was quite an experience when you're a first-time biker. And that was really uh, the first of the S's in success, or the second of the S's in success was, you know, show the world you can do it. Um, I think by us women uh, going out together and on our bikes, we've been able to promote other women riders. And indeed, the Ministry of Transport actually asked me to bring my bike in because when they opened up the career occupations to... Um, as, as traffic of intent to employ women to ride motorbikes, they asked me to come in and, with my big bike um, and show them uh, me riding around so that, that they could see that yeah, it was possible um, and that um, give them the confidence that I had a really big bike, even though it's only five foot two. Most of them were taller than me and they only had the smaller Kawasaki's to learn on. But if I could do it, they felt, well, yes, um, they would be able to do it. And then that, that's the way I think we can inspire other people by not, maybe we don't feel comfortable as I don't really today feel comfortable sharing my story. I feel a bit humble about it, but I'm prepared to do it because hopefully it will help someone else and inspire them. And in the same way, um, as women riders inspired other women to learn to ride. And I suppose it's um, the last, as you take risks and become more confident, um, not only can you provide a role model to other people, you can also um, give yourself confidence to strive for tougher goals and higher things. So that's really the, um, the conclusion. This is now the bike that I that I have here. This is a Dyna Street Bob. Um, I did, I've had two accidents in my life, both of them in Bahrain, where both occasions um, uh, drivers have driven into the back of me. Um, the first time that that happened, the sportster that I was, that I was riding in the last slide was written off, but what was an opportunity out of it, I suppose, there was something positive out of these experiences. I didn't realise how many people I knew um, after I'd had that accident, how many people stopped. Um, one man who I didn't even know him, but I knew his brother, um, the police decided I had to pay money. It was a substantial amount of money. I don't really understand to this day what it was for. Um, stop me running away, I suppose. Um, they they um, charged me this money and I didn't have any cash with me. And he said, uh, no problem. My brother knows you. I'll pay it for you. And I thought, goodness me, I don't even know this person. I only know his brother. But he knows me and he's willing to do this for me. Um, the Harley Davidson shop, it was at night time. Uh, the Harley Davidson shop that we actually closed sent down a truck to pick the bike up. Um, somebody else uh, took me back to my house because I lived in Amway. It was a long way from the day where I'd had the accident and so on. It was, seemed like thousands of people had stopped to help me. Um, and that really brought home to me. A, I was lucky because I was when I was hit, the bike went 30 meters down the road. I remember standing up and thinking, thank God I'm actually alive. Um, I haven't got any major injuries. Um, the bike's written off. Well, that was disappointing because I was supposed to be going on another trip to 
Lebanon and Jordan after that on the bike. So I was really disappointed about that. But they got me another bike um, and I got the opportunity of getting a much bigger bike from an 883 Sport start onto 1500cc bike. You can see there in the picture, um, which is my primary bike. So that's, I think, um, the key points from, from my story, how you can reflect on what you've learned in your life about working hard, persevering, but having a life um, balance and using, using the, those stories to help you to try something new um, and to have fun um, at the same time. So uh, coming back to the book, all the stories in this book about women on success are similar in that way, where there's a will, there's a way. And if any of you are interested, I would recommend you um, looking into that book. It's available on Amazon. I don't get any royalties, by the way. We didn't get paid for writing the book, so I'm not promoting it for that way. It was um, something that we did just to share our ideas. Um, but the, the actual story, my story, I'll send to you um, by uh, WhatsApp or email. Um, or Dr. Or you can keep it here, uh, Sister. Uh... Yeah. If you want also, yeah. you can attach it here in the Zoom. Okay, right, I'll do that later. Thank you. So, so um, really, that's the key highlights of my, of my life, and um, I'll put them out there for you to ask me any questions you would like to. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, really, it's a great uh, summary of a very inspiring life. I think I could uh, say that... Uh, it reflect uh, again, as you said, my life, and I'm sure uh, many people life here are available uh, with us, uh, especially those uh, who passed 30 years old. They know now they reflect of their uh, achievements or whatever their life aspiration, not inspiration. Always, I say that aspiration is uh, very important. It is the base for inspiration because inspiration is much higher level than aspiration. And I think your aspiration to prove that as a woman, the challenges uh, in your community, whether in your uh, your studies and what you wanted to achieve, uh, going to a foreign countries, uh, uh, taking the uh, challenges as academic or as uh, multidisciplinary or as a bike rider. I think it's all reflect uh, all us in different way, different things in life. Uh, I wish I have the courage, uh, I dare to ride a bike, always I tell uh, Dunya, when I was young, uh, below 10 years old, I was always in a bike, uh, in a most difficult place in Lebanon, uh, always there is hills and so on, not a motorbike, but a, a bike, I mean, but a bicycle, but uh, unfortunately now I, w I wish to do that, but always I'm afraid that uh, my spare part is very expensive, so for that... <laughs> Uh, I believe that uh, I don't dare to do that. But I think we should always have this courage. This courage is one of the barriers of many people of, of us. Uh, the sphere in mindset, in our mindset, uh, is one of our barriers that we don't take many things in life that we wish to try and it will take us to another stage. I mean, it, okay, it might be sometime a hobby, sometime something in uh, life, sometime is a livelihood and so on, but it will take us to another stage. I will, I will give the chance now to the two leaders that you are training, which is uh, Remli and Bartolla, they have questions. And then we will have, uh, of course, uh, we have with us a great guest like uh, Nikolai, like uh, also Prof. Uh, Jajabati, uh, which uh, they, I'm sure they will have uh, because they are coming next. So they are preparing for, uh, they're learning from you now. Okay. So uh, Remli? Yes, sir. Do you have a question? Uh, hello, uh, I'm, it's, it's really a very amazing seminar that's going on. Hello, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I do have a few questions. Uh, ma'am, uh, according to you, what should be our approach towards, uh, should define our success? But uh, like as a young woman, like what should my definition of success be? Like how should I approach it? Well, I think that's my point really, is that there isn't one 
definition that you make your own. Um, and I think uh, most of us, our stories start with our childhood, our parents, often because they dreamt of something and didn't do it, you find that they often want you, your parents want you to be something that they didn't manage to do themselves. And this can be one of the challenges for us. It may be, uh, I've heard of some of my friends, um, they wanted to be doctors, but their parents didn't want them to be doctors or whatever. In my case, I want to be a doctor. My parents didn't agree with it. But I think you have to um, uh, search yourself and find what is it, what is your own dream? And uh, you, you then judge yourself against that rather than let society judge you with, with some against something that maybe you um, that you don't want to do. So there isn't an answer in a way. There isn't an answer to your question. Uh, what we can do though is we can seek out um, other people to help us uh, to mentor us as we are now as uh, as a group uh, as a network we can help each other to, um, to go on that journey because it's not necessarily something that you, in my case, as a small child, I don't know how I came to want to be a doctor. This may be through reading about Albert Schweitzer, I think. I don't know how, I can't remember it such a long time ago. But um, if you are not sure, as many people aren't sure exactly what they want to do, um, then you can look to other people who you admire. Um, I think that's part of the purpose of why Dr. Muhammad set this up, that we can learn, look at other people's lives, see if there's elements of that that we think would be interesting to do. And it's a, finding your career path is a matter of trial and error a little bit. It's okay that you don't know now, but there isn't an answer to the question about what your goal ought to be or what how it would make you successful and my point was as long as you're happy if you have a happy life then you probably are successful if you enjoy your life and make the most of all god's given talents then you must be successful yes mum uh like another question to you uh, ma'am, uh, like, are there any failures that you faced in your life, and uh, like, how should we uh, approach those failures and turn it, uh, like, turn it to be a part and parcel of our? Well, life? I think that's really what uh, one of the, if you like, failures that I was sharing with you um, was um, the fact that I'd always wanted to have a motorbike. As an example, I'd had a lot of barriers in my life to getting one. Um, and it wasn't until I really had the opportunity or made the opportunity of when I was by myself to do that. So I, I guess uh, I'm pretty happy with my life, really. I've, there aren't any things in my life that I haven't done yet. If I haven't done them, they're on my bucket list to do. Um, so I don't know if that's perhaps a very helpful um, answer to your question. But I think you make, you make your own journey um, you you persevere with it you don't give up those are the things that will help you um so uh, um, uh what do you want people to remember in you the future generation or the people uh, around you how do you want them to look at you uh, well, I think at my age, one of the good things about being older is you don't really care what people think about you anymore. So I don't really have, I don't really have a, um, I don't really have a, a way that I want to um, be remembered in that way. Um, but I suppose uh, if you imagine that somebody's speaking about you at your funeral, I'd hope that they would say, yes, um, she helped people, she did her best um, at all times. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's how I'd like, as I, I'd like to be remembered as somebody who was a caring person um, and, I, and who went the extra mile, um, didn't just think of myself, I guess, and, you know, I do try and live, I do try and live my life in that way. So, for example, I try and help people who are studying um, to, with their PhDs, I help read their research for them, give them feedback, fix their English, this sort of a thing. And that's my, if you like, my 
contribution to charity. Um, so I try and do things like that. If I see somebody at the supermarket who hasn't got enough money to pay for their groceries and was going to put something back, I'll pay for them. I try and do every little way of my life every day is a lived, um, is a lived experience I try and um, share because I'm the way others, whether it's my time, which I could have charged for, or by actually sometimes, um, you know, actual physical donations or whatever. And that's how I'd like to be remembered as somebody who didn't just um, think about what themselves and what, you know, money could buy more luxuries for them, but who actually shared what they had to help others. Okay, great. Thank you for your uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ramli, uh, let us give uh, a chance for Bartola before we open the floor for the others. So Bartola, you have any questions, comments? Hello, good afternoon. Uh, good, good evening, sorry. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for sharing with us the experience. Actually, I do have one question. Um, for example, many times um, I see you as a really special woman and different. So I assume that you have many comments and judgment. So for example, many times it happened to me that people told me I'm crazy, my ambitions are too big, uh, I can't do it because I'm a lady and so on and so on. And sometimes it does put me down a little bit. So I would like you to know how, do you, how did you deal with those people who maybe don't understand your ambitions? Yes, yeah, so I must admit, uh, I laughed when you said you, people said you were crazy. Um, apparently, yeah. <laughs> I, no one ever said that to my face, but apparently I was known as Crazy Chris Coots. And I suppose that was always because I was doing something different or th other things other people were afraid of doing or um, whatever. And I can remember when, I remember when I left the Polytechnic, they had a um, farewell for me. And um, that, uh, that's really where some of these things came out. And one of the people, I used to take this lady to work every day. She didn't have a car. Um, and one day we were going down the highway and this car had uh, flipped on its lid and the, there was still a man inside um, and nobody was stopping. And so I, I, I thought, what's going on here? Nobody's stopping for this person. So I pulled up the car and climbed over the roof and um, got, had to open the door, which was very hard um, because it was upside down. Suddenly the door felt very heavy. Got, I used his, his um, gutra to wrap around his head and managed to get the back door open. And by then, as some other people had stopped and so on. And then I went to work and Pauline, who was with me, she said, Chris, do you realise you've got blood all down the back of your shirt and so on? And I thought, I, mean, I had been completely oblivious to that. There was broken glass, all the cuts all over my hand and everything. Um, and I think that that, at this farewell, I've completely forgotten about that, just come and gone. Um, there was actually another occasion where a a, pit, a water truck had tipped over as well and the, all the drivers had been thrown out and I went down to help and all the people in the bank just stood and watched. I thought, what, what is with these people that they don't help? But uh, at my farewell, Pauline was saying, well, she told the story and, um, and other stories. And I guess you then start to realise that you do things that other people wouldn't. She said, I would never do that. I wouldn't. I'd be too nervous to even drive on the, to even stop and climb over a vehicle. I'd be too afraid it was going to blow up or whatever. But it never occurred to me that you would even doubt that you would go and help someone. And so I think there's things like that. We just have to believe in yourself and um, um, know that you, if, if it is your time to go, if something's going to go wrong, well, it's not in your hand and just to do uh, just to trust you in your own beliefs and your own heart. So that that's what I think the because I could tell many stories and there are some in the in the paper that you can access um, of times when I have had um, discrimination um, in my job seeking to be a manager or whatever. Um, but I think you just have to believe in yourself and um, 
and carry on and just be professional and not not think of yourself as, as a, a downtrodden woman you know having these ones just to think well i am professional i know that i have the expertise and if you don't to make sure that you do to keep studying keep learning and um and, and not allow yourself, because it's a choice, to not allow yourself to be put down by other people's limitations to create your own goals and your own sense of what is success and judge yourself by that, not be ju not allow other people's judgments of you to limit you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot, Bartolia. Uh, now uh, we'll open the floor before uh, we give the final floor to Dunya. So, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Jab Jabati, your question, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Not question, but really, I'm very much uh, proud to have uh, all those uh, successful in a particularly uh, for a lady uh, who can who can uh, I mean, reach uh, her mission in it in a short period in life. It is. Not no question, but so curiosity, uh, so many curiosity I have that is not possible to explore at this moment. Really, really many thanks to Kout. Thank you. Okay. Chris Kout. You are really, humble. Really. You are a humble guy. Also, we know that you have achieved a lot. So we are excited to meet you next time. You are our yeah, next okay. in the list. And okay. uh, again, uh, this is before uh, because of uh, Prof. Chris, Prof. Noor. She excited yeah. us to uh, get to know you. Also, and we have many people actually, but uh, since you are uh, the early hanging fruits, I can say, uh, we wanted to start with you. Uh, we have any uh, hundreds of people around okay. that we can, but uh, I would say I wanted to comment on uh, uh, what uh, Chris said uh, just the la last, uh, last part of her talk now uh, in answering uh, Bartolla. It's really Bartolla what I noticed in uh, studying the inspiring people. And maybe Godfred, because he was in my last visit, he was with me and Paul. Maybe they know, they remember this. I always, uh, when I go, when we go to uh, uh, for uh, what we call it exploratory visit for country, we make a seven day uh, visit, seven days usually, to explore the country and explore the people and to see who we can really be our partners. Sometimes those who arrange our visit, they might not be our partners because they arrange the visit, yes. But they are, they are not the people that we are can depend on to be uh, for long term because we see them they are not uh, excited they are looking for money or for shortcuts or something like this and for that you see sometimes I, I frankly I discover the people from this what uh, Chris said that they are usually proactive they will move if there is an accident if there is a need okay they will uh, be uh, self initiative uh, and uh, they will not take things for granted. These things, and I think Godfrey, you remember these words. Yes, uh, for that, Godfrey and Paul, they were not my uh, first uh, contact in these in their countries. Okay, uh, but uh, they end up maybe they were my fourth or fifth contact in, the, in these countries. But they end up to be the first contact. I don't trust now anybody in their countries in their region except they go through them. Why? Because I know. They are thinking the same principles that uh, Chris, uh, she mentioned now without saying it in directly, but she said it through story, whether for the accident or whether for other things. To, uh, to help people is one thing. Lots of people, they help people in uh, their uh, in assignment and their PhD and so on. This is maybe something also they enjoy, uh, like uh, most of academics, they do that. I am a, re a reviewer and the, all of most of us uh, academics, we review even papers for others. But this is because we consider it part of our self-development. So it is like now we have to separate between being selfless and selfish. Sometimes this is selfish because you want to have power and the more you review, the more you'll have power, the more you'll be uh, accepted by lots of journals and so on and so on. And you'll develop your academics. But to give away something, that nobody will weigh, uh, was expecting you to give. And to do this uh, out of uh, common sense and out of nature, that's something either it can be built by inspiring leader, which is I told you in the beginning, we're not talking about them, because I don't want to say, for example, that so-and-so is an inspiring person, okay? Like uh, New Zealand uh, Prime Minister, I, if I consider her an inspiring leader, 
as a born leader, it means I'm saying eliminating that nobody like her will be coming in, in New Zealand or around the world as a prime minister. But if I consider that her life story and the way she built and she dealt with the, uh, the challenges that made her inspiring person, that's, uh, that means I can be like her. And in inspiration economy, always we should remember Partola because you are going to lead in this paper, okay? With Godfrey and Ramli and others, okay? That uh, we need to always uh, give this message very clear. And it, 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 the decision was up to them. They had the challenge, they, they've seen an accident and they chosen to interact with it. Because some people will say, oh, legally, why should I go and jump into a car? And then I open the door. Maybe tomorrow if I carry him, they, tomorrow they say, I'm, I have a problem with that. They'll always call me, the police, they'll call me for, uh, to be a witness or something like this. This is most of the people that think like this today, especially today. Okay. While and we are looking for these people because these people, they are the ones not because of helping others. They are, they have this self-initiative. They are proactive. They, uh, any accident, even the, uh, something for them or for others, they will uh, sometimes go for it even because they, they believe and this is the, God has given them this chance to discover themselves more. Okay, so this may be my comment. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if I may, I want to go quickly now through uh, Nikolai and then we open the floor for uh, any, uh, and Paul if, if he wants and then we go for the conclusion with Dr. Dunia. Yes, Nikolai, please. Uh, I need to turn on my microphone. Hello, dear colleagues. It's so nice to see all of you. Your, your face is already, uh, I don't know, so so close to me, <laughs> even though we didn't talk uh, much uh, lately. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, thank you for inviting me here uh, once again. And sorry for being late, because I, I had like 10 hour day of exams and it's just one uh, passed by, you know, just like a few minutes ago. So thanks for giving me some relaxed and philosophical time. You actually, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't hear much, but all these questions of being inspired and um, actually not being just inspired by yourself, but inspire other people. That's, that's the reason why I choose teaching. I have that, you know, 20 years anniversary of teaching the last year. So this year is 21 already. And I usually went to the business. So money goes with the business, but I always come back to the teaching. And I, I can explain you why, because it's, it's the way of life. You cannot teach if you're not inspired or if you cannot inspire anyone, because you cannot just upload your knowledge or experience to another person. All you can do as a teacher, all you can do as an example, as a life example, you can live your life and motivate people around you to, to become better. I usually am so happy of my students when they reach some of new steps in their career. And that's, I don't know, that's, that's a part of me because all of them who actually um, somewhere like a CEO of the companies and they do some kind of great projects. I, I feel and I believe that my, part of me actually participating in this pro project. So talking about inspiration and motivation, it, it's all about, you know, teaching and, and studying. So that we are all together in these same ideas here. So but that's my, you know, sharp thoughts about this topic. Thank okay. you. Great. Great. Thanks a lot, uh, Nikolai. Uh, Godfrey, do you have any comments? Yes, uh, hello. Good evening, everyone. It's, it's really nice meeting all of you, and I think your story is really inspiring. It really applies, and I think it's very encouraging, and um, it's very encouraging and inspiring. That's, that's what I can see, and uh, I'm really, I've really learned a lot from it. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you, Godfrey. Okay. Now uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, Dr. Dunia, we conclude, inshallah. Okay. Okay. So, um, first, uh, good evening, everyone. Of the you can hear her? Okay. Yes. So, yeah, but it's better if she turn on the microphone, I think. No? Yeah, but uh, you can hear me from Dr. Muhammad, because we are sitting next to each other. Okay, good. 
So, uh, yes, uh, I always heard a lot about you from Dr. Muhammad, and I was always were looking forward to know who is this person, Noor or Chris, uh, Dr. Chris, because I think that you had a lot in your life. But really, when I read this chapter that you wrote in this book, I thought I was really very happy about it. First, because as a selfish person, uh, me as a Bahraini woman, I was really very happy to read how you see Bahraini women. And uh, I, yeah, you worked a lot, you worked hard as a woman to let others see us how we are. We live this life and we want to, to make sure that it's really uh, how others see it, sees us. So thanks a lot for what you wrote about Bahraini women. Uh, woman, and thanks a lot also about when you wrote about how women we always face who, wherever we are, where are, about this glass ceiling I always uh, talk about. Our life is full of a glass ceiling. Uh, it's more uh, visible for people with vulnerable groups, more visible for women, especially as you said, when we all want to go for high rank positions, managerial positions or to do multiple tasks in our life, here where the glass ceilings get thicker and thicker and where we need always to be, uh, and to break each time uh, one of these glass so we can reach the next step. And the life balance is a really challenge for everyone uh, in uh, our community, in our society, men or women. Um, and we always forget this life balance. Sometimes we think of education, we forget the practical, being practical in our job. We forget family, friends, we forget ourselves sometimes. So this was something really I learned a lot from your life and it was like a reminder for us that we need to have this. The enjoyable about your life when I read the story is the ups and downs. I mean, if you had a normal life that your parents said yes from the day one, you had everything, you were allowed for everything, believe me, you wouldn't, as I can see, you wouldn't enjoy most of it. The only things that let us enjoy lots of things is when we get these no's, when we get these downs, when we get these obstacles in our life. Here, when we appreciate it, when we have it in our later life, when we maneuver and we go through different pathways, then we know that, yes, although I missed that, but I learned something uh, else. So I think there was a lot of lesson learned for us from your, uh, li from your life story. Although it reminds us in lots of situations of, uh, I remember myself a lot. I remember my mother's story with my grandfather when he thought that being his daughters, being nurses or teachers, or in some classical job is how women should be and how th um, my mother changed things when she worked in, in the banking sector and then she didn't want us to go through this and then again I have lots, lots of things in my what's which I learned that I don't want my students go through uh, so yes uh, I think even after a hundred years from now if we go backward forward there will be always a lesson that you want to learn and I like this you know What's her name or his name? When you get up early, you wake the dog up. So here it is, the puppy. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe we're not going to the time for this meeting. So thanks, thanks a lot for sharing this piece of chapter. Uh, when you talked about it, of course, it was totally different. Uh, being a positive. I think the secret of the life is being positive no matter what's happened to us in our life, we are going to face a lot and all over the world. But being positive is the secret to be happy. And when we become happy, then we are going to be successful. Thank you. So, okay, any other qu last questions? Or shall we close it out? Ramli, since you are the boss. <laughs> no, sir. My, my questions are complete. I okay. got the answer to every question. Thank is, you so is, much. Is, is Paul around, Paul? Paul is alive? No. Yes, uh, Paul? I guess uh, I guess he's in a village. He's uh, there, He's there, but he maybe he can't uh, Yeah, his ne enter. net is very okay. slow, sir. Yeah. Okay, slow. Okay, no problem. Uh, Altaf, Hussein, Altaf, you are there? Okay. 
Uh, so anyway, I think we need to close. I would like to thank you again uh, for uh, 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 Prof. Uh, Chris uh, Kotz, which is uh, our, her other name is Noor. Uh, really, you, you made Noor in our life. You made the uh, light. Noor mean light in our life. You enlighten our life by your, uh, uh, and it given us uh, that is normal, what is we are facing. Sometimes I say, what, why should I make this all headaches? I have two journals, uh, uh, too many projects, sub-projects, uh, entering um, projects in other countries. I, I mean, it's like I'm keeping myself uh, in a mess sometimes. But I believe that this is the, the road for those who want to create a legacy. And I think uh, being uh, having Nukulai with us, who attended, I think the only one who attended, and Paul, uh, he heard uh, this story and uh, again and again from many people who came to the conference, uh, where their life was full of uh, challenges, full of obstacles. But in the end of the day, they are happy that they gone through that because they created from it a major difference. Uh, and it is a choice that we have lots of choices in life, okay? Even this COVID has given us uh, really a great choices. Uh, that is, we, if we look at it in deeper and deeper, uh, we will uh, discover lots of uh, opportunities and solutions. Thanks a lot again. And this is a good uh, training session, I think, for all, all these, uh, these teams, uh, whether... Uh, the coming uh, inspiring, I don't want to say leaders, because I told you, I want to separate it from uh, leaders, inspiring leaders, because people means any one of us can be inspiring. So hopefully the uh, next meeting will be for, with the prof, uh, Professor uh, Jajabati. And again, Ramli and Partula now, it's, uh, you will lead uh, totally next time. This time we try to help you. Uh, and of course, you, we need to analyze the videos later. And this is the ro role of Partula. Uh, with the Godfrey to analyze the videos properly and the uh, Prof. Chris will help you okay on that so that we get uh, metadata as uh, Prof. Chris was saying and uh, create from it a good uh, paper inshallah. Thanks a lot and uh, wish you good night for those uh, who did not sleep in India and uh, good morning for uh, uh, New Zealand. See you soon inshallah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Bye. Good night.